Model Making Guru is sponsored by emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.Guru here. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode or issue 54 of the Diagostini Star Wars Build Your Own X-Wing video build series video build. I keep doing that, never mind. Yes, welcome to issue 54. No idea what episode number this is because they're well out of sync. It, episode 22 or 23 or something, I don't know. Anyway, yes, welcome to issue 54, uh, where we have more bits. Still working on the engine, but we have our first little bit of colouriness on the uh, on the engine cowlings, which tells us it's that one. Yes, just in case you weren't sure, it's that one. So we've got some engine bits and the interior bits there. Now, we've done this before. We've done three wings already, so we know what we're doing. You know what to expect. So, of course, as always, before we get going, let's have a quick look at the magazine. Uh, so we're still talking about First Order TIE Fighters. Three issues now. <sighs> I'm, I've, I've not read through this. I've not read through any of these. And I uh, I tend to read the magazines once I finish the part work build. It's kind of the weird thing I do. I like to read them all en masse rather than read a bit and then forget the next one. But what I read the last time. So I've not read any of these. So clearly a lot of work has gone into these. I didn't mind the... Uh, the sequel films, I thought they were quite good. Now, they did say that apparently this set was the biggest, most complicated set. I did, it says there, our biggest and hardest set we had to make. And I'm thinking, didn't you have to build an entire Millennium Falcon in a rebel landing base type thing? Wouldn't that be a more complicated set? I don't know. Anyway, unless that was a later, f I don't know. Like I said in the last episode, i kind of forgotten everything about the three sort of uh, sequel films. They've all blurred together into a mishmash of, I can't remember any of it. So, yes. Uh, then we have some information on Darth Vader. Uh, and this seems to be focusing on a comic book story of that I've not seen, a graphic novel or comic sort of uh, story, because it's talking about a ship, Lord Vader's starship, which was gifted to him by the Emperor, but I have no idea what that is. I don't really read comics, so I have no idea. I probably had a droid in it. So very interesting uh, information. Good comic book art there. I like the artwork. Comic books have come a long way since I was a young lad. Uh, and oh we don't have any little interstitial talking about the ship information we just go straight into the build no nonsense blah 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 building okay there we go so i thought it might have a little interesting fact about the x-wing but not uh we've got an extra page at the back oh it's at the back there we go it's at the back they caught me unaware upper port engine it says uh, like most of the rebel fleet, Red 5 was kept going by scavenging whatever parts were needed. This resulted in several obviously mismatched panels with the yellow paint on the upper port Kenjin. Kenjin? Ket's not even a word. Coffee. Obviously mismatched panels with the yellow paint on the upper port engine, case being a prominent example. Yes, with this blue bit here that's not reflected on that at all. Never mind. Don't forget, we are going to be repainting this in its entirety. So, yes. And then on the back, we've got a very nice picture of the TIE Fighter Gefahrten. So there you go. That's issue 54. Enough waffle. Let's get on with the building. OK, so not a lot of big bits this time. We don't need the wing that we built last time at all. Uh, we're just building the engine sort of intake part and the cowling that goes with it. And I do like that yellow. It looks quite, even though they only do this kind of spray of colour with the black, it does look quite good. But we'll be repainting that. Don't you worry, we'll be repainting. Yeah, so what do we need to do? First of all, move all these out of the way. Shouldn't need any screws or anything today. It's just snappity snappity. Now, uh, we need to take the... Upper front engine casing and the retro thrust nozzle. And it shows it this way around. Now I've had this bit before and I've always had trouble knowing which way around it's supposed to all go. So I assume it's supposed to go this way. But it doesn't actually suggest. Oh no, it does. They've got a clearer picture this time that does actually show you it goes this way. So you have two, two pins. And you have, I know it's hard to see because it's dark and two holes. All you need to do is put it in there and line those two up. It's not as easy as it looks because you can't see the pins and you can't see the holes they go in. So it's a bit tricky knowing exactly whether it's lined up or not. Uh, 
can't quite there we go Spadung, it's in thunk just by cunning use of looking and examining with eyeballs it goes in for some reason it was a lot easier than the other three i've done which were a bit fiddly so that is in there we go it's nice it's quite dark in there but you might be wondering why i'm not doing any painting of these interior bits while you see me build them don't worry about that we've said it before in the earlier episodes i'm going to paint this all once it's assembled and the bits that go in here you're not going to see the interior bits like the shiny silver and gold things and when you the bits you do see out here i have a way of making them look like used engine components so don't worry about that so that's that size of that that will be if you know your um kit bashing on the studio model that will be a chunk of saturn 5 rocket fuselage with greeble stuck on yeah saturn 5 the one of the most used models in ilm or sci-fi model kit bashing history so we've got the remaining components what do we do with these we turn the page is what we do so fit the pins on the lower half of the gyro cone into the holes on the horizontal vein so we need so this one's got holes that one's got pins pins now the important thing here is to pay close attention to the actual photo giraffe this shows a, a sink mark there and that's a way for you to know that you've got this the right way around not that way that way because there's the sink mark so this goes like that and then this pops on over the top now these are quite a well they have been in the past again it's probably going to be absolutely fine because when i've done this before it's been a pain in the ass to get in but that's got in fine no problem they've always been a bit tricky to fit so there we go that's that bit on there if i remember rightly this on the real thing on the studio model is a either a saturn 5 f1 engine thruster nozzle or it's something off a of gemini 124th gemini i can't quite remember if this bit is even on the studio model i don't know this this build this kit itself is not 100 percent accurate it's it's good but it's not 100 percent. so next we have fit the upper half of the gyro cone over the projecting pins it goes like this it's obviously going to match that one so there you go so those two those pins that you've just popped through now go into the half of that this is where it gets a bit tricky if it can get a bit tricky there we go okay the first three of these i've had issues with big massive gaps and in between these two this one again just, just, i don't know what they've changed but this engine is going together much better than the last three there we go now this is a tricky bit hole fit the longer pin on the cooling vein into the hole in the lower half of the gyro cone now you see this here like with your eyes long pin short pin long pin short pin big box little box fish cardboard fish whatever this needs to go so i fit the longer pin which is that one into the cooling vein. now this is oh this always gives me the yips when i do this because yeah, I, I always think I'm going to break it and somehow I haven't so far because it's a really tight fit let's just risk it for a biscuit it's a really tight fit and I just think I'm going to snap it and if you do snap it you're kind of knackered all you can do is glue it in place but eh. oh I don't like it don't like it this is a really tight fit this one tighter than the other ones have been I don't want to pull it out again because that will stress the plastic but it could just be the layer of paint on it is making it hard to fit ah, there we go that's in just don't try one thing I would say is for the love of dog don't wiggle it don't jiggle it back and forth to try and get it to fit and don't try and pull it back out because when you've got a very tight fit like that if you start wiggling things around that peg is going to get bent and bent and bent and then just snap and then you've got to glue this in place which is not impossible but it's, it's not ideal and getting replacement parts not that easy so just go slowly don't force anything just keep pushing it keep pushing it and it'll come in eventually uh, fit the lower shroud onto the two pins on the upper half of the gyro cone so that is like that and again noting on the artwork in the magazine it does show the sink marks you can see the sink marks the ejector pin marks so that needs to go like that keep those in mind now it may well be 
some of these fits are a little bit tight because of the paint on the plastic. You can always widen the hole a tiny bit by just taking a knife blade and scraping it round if anything's a bit of a, a bit of a shonky fit. So there you go. Ejector pin marks on the back because you're never going to see that. On the front, you're not going to see them. That is that bit. And this, although it doesn't need to go in yet, this will quite simply fit in there. So that little peg on there's the camera i'm doing up there what am i doing up there for that little bit pin sticking up there goes into that hole there like uh does it yes that little peg there goes to this little hole so a good way to line it up so now you've got it lined up properly and that sits there like that so that's how it would look in the end so if you did snap that pin you'd have to what you would have to do is glue it in place and then loosely fit this with that peg going in there to make sure it's all in straight and true and then leave it to set and then when you're finished you can pop it out again and that will be glued in place but you know you might want to use super glue rather than um, any other glue just if you have to do that bit just because it will dry quickly and you can wiggle it around and get it in place so try not to snap that bit but that is issue 54 I forgot which one we're doing then so that's where we'll do with issue 54 so next up of course we'll have issue i can't remember there's no good side for that well, i'll do that one next up we'll have issue 55 but until then of course thank you very much for watching don't forget if you'd like to help support this channel please do consider becoming a patron or a channel becoming a channel member either hit the join button underneath any one of my videos or go to patreon.com slash model making guru you can support the channel directly you can keep it alive keep the lights on and help me keep making content i depend on my patrons and channel members to keep this alive so keep it going and of course don't forget the link for this part work is in the description below the video if you want to build one of these big bad boys yourself until then take care of yourselves like subscribe and hit the notification bell and i shall say thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves go make something awesome like this go be awesome and until next time Adios, amoebas.